It's Gary Spence, the man with the Swedish rhythms, and my special guest just a few feet away is Miss Lovely Lisa Stansfield. Ooh. Hello. <laughs> is that the biggest build-up you've ever had, Lisa? Oh, probably. This is when you got a lie, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> I try to get my husband to say that every time we get into bed. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> but he often refuses. No. Well, perhaps yeah. he might do it tonight, you know. <laughs> well, if he listens to this, he I might. I think he might. I think he might be a little bit jealous. But it's, it's really nice, Lisa, because I know the last couple of times we've spoken on the phone, and it's always nice to look into someone's eyes, isn't it, like your own? Yeah, and not just hear their and voice. And just have a bit of fun. And we and said we don't really like telephones. No, we don't anyway. like telephones. So every time we meet now, we've got to meet in the studio yeah. and, and have a chat, really, haven't we? But... Um, I think last time we spoke, you was going to do the Soul Train Awards. Yeah, and it, and it was just, I didn't, I decided against it because it, it was like, you know, it was going back to America. Mm. And it was just me going on the Soul Train Awards and singing the, the most well-known song that I'd ever done. So I thought, no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Because it just paints me as a has-been, mm. really. And mm. I don't think I really am that quite yet. No, you've got, got a few many more years, years in me. Many years to go. And, and obviously it was a journey as well you were talking about. Obviously it was about 14 hours on the plane if you was going to do that. Yeah, and it would have it been like I would have had about two days to recover. Mm. Or the, no, not even that. Mm. We'd have had to go into rehearsals the day after. And then do that, and it's it, it's a long flight. Mm. So if you're in the area, then it's fine. But mm. no, I I just decided against it because of the whole like retro thing. So yeah, it is a retro thing. They but, must have but, missed you though, Lisa. They must have missed you. Yeah, but I, I think when I do when I do that, I I want to do it in the right way, and I don't want to do it slapdash and haphazard and stuff. Mm. I want to I want to really really making it impact again mm. if so I, I can you yeah, know so i think when you get the offer next time you probably need to take me yeah and we could do a duet <laughs> <laughs> now that's my next question really i'm looking Sorry. for it to do a bit of background vocals so probably on your next single yeah you or on your your next single well, no, i'm not going to make one am i <laughs> <laughs> i do a remake of all around the world shall i <laughs> And congratulations on your new album as well. You know, we've got that in front of us Thank now. Thank you. And uh, we've, got, we've got the deluxe version now because obviously it's been re-released mm. with all these remixes on it. And Seven. What, do you, what do you think about the re You know, are you okay with the remixes? Yeah, you know what? I, uh, I've not really sat down properly and listened to them all in, in a, a really, like, mm. like, one after the other and stuff. Because... It, when you make an album, it's really strange because it's so like ingrained into you, like the, every sound, every lyric, everything, you know, every beat. And and when someone does that in a different way, sometimes at first, I'm I'm a real bad person for this. Like <laughs> I, I I get things stuck into my head and then. Mm. You know, if someone comes along and changes it, then it's it, it is quite um, quite weird at first. But once you get used to it, it's it's absolutely lovely mm. because you re you realise that people are actually appreciating what you've done and they want to add to it. You know. And obviously, you're you're releasing the new singles. It's so be it. Is that, that's yeah, going to yeah. be the big one for Christmas. That could be the Christmas number one then. No, I don't think so. <laughs> you might have to wear a at Christmas outfit stage, on a video. It could take a while longer. Mm. Yeah, yeah. What, what, talking about Christmas, what do you get up to over Christmas? You know, is, it a big, is it a big event um, for you? Well, like me and Ian, my husband, we, we work together. and um, We've been together for 26 years mm. and for t 25 years we've spent have family Christmases mm. and, and we've because we, we travel a lot we've always had to travel back to Rochdale every year mm. and um and this year we've just said we're not going to do it we're going to be on our all on our own and oh. we're going to go to LA oh, how Cause romantic because we, we bought a place there yeah um 
about 14 months ago and we've had 10 days mm. there so far so yeah we're going to be like make, is that somewhere you always want to buy a place is, is um it? not really but the, it, there seems to be quite a nice vibe going on there mm. at the moment I mean, I love New York, like we've moved out of New York now, but mm. we've gone to LA, but mm. we probably eventually will we'll move back to You New must York. miss Manchester. <laughs> oh, well, we, could, we, li we sort of go backwards and forwards mm. now from London to, yeah. to Rochdale, because we've got the studio there, and, um, and we're doing a lot more there as well, like studio-wise and stuff, so... Yeah, it's it's been really really nice. Get like getting to know yeah. everybody and, and new, your new neighbours. Your new neighbours out there. <laughs> well, no, not really. But you get but everyone's so gorgeous. Like you know, there's like a co-op <laughs> opposite <laughs> the road, and um, you know, there's a co-op, and, and I go over every morning. I get me. Me like breakfast things and and get a bit like a chicken for later and all that sort mm. of thing, um, and it's really nice and you and everyone's really really friendly and mm. you forget how friendly everyone really is, especially when you've been living somewhere like London. Yeah, you know when you're in your own community in London, then it's absolutely fine. Like you know we li we live in a small place. Um, and everyone gets on very well, mm. but when you get, when when you get into the midst of it, it's like everyone's in a rush and nobody gives a shit. <laughs> <laughs> so do you get recognised, obviously, over there? Do you have to be careful when you walk out, or what in um in your new flat, in you know, in your new place? Oh, in LA. Yeah, in LA, yeah. God, I've not, not had en enough time to be recognised. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I suppose that was like a year ago, so. Mm. No, nobody re really knows what's going on with no, me at so the moment over there, but yeah. a lot of people want me to go over there. Yeah. So we need, we really do need to sort of, you know, yeah. is your we album... don't want to make a mistake. No. Yet, you know? no, is your album ready, released and over there, is it? Um, well as yeah, well, it, obviously this, this album, Seven, will be the first to be released yeah. over there, but, but next year, we're starting next year, mm. like January, we're going to start. Um, recording the next album. You must be, I know we spoke about it earlier, but you must be very pleased. I mean, this is a real top album. I'm not just saying Thank that because you. you're in front of me, Lisa, yeah. but, you know, I mean, Love Can. You know, I mean, I said it when we interviewed on the... Oh, uh, well, that's a proper that, soul boy oh, tune. Oh, that is, that is. That's a proper, like, yeah. soul weekender. Mm. And and uh, <laughs> the remix by Snowball, which I played on my show mm. recently. Absolutely ah, fantastic. He's really sort of. Uh, ah, he's lovely. Snowboy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Do you know what I've got to say as well? That Snowboy, he was so upset because he used to do um, a regular set, like most Fridays at Madame Jojo's in Soho, mm. London, and um, they've got, basically they're going to close it down because oh. it, it, it's all corruption and it's all mm. crap. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's like one of the last sort of bastions of, of Soho, mm. like Soho as it should be, yeah. you know. Most places seem to be closed down, there's flats and houses built yeah, in there these days. Said, like, Seems to be the... build a coffee shop on there or <laughs> and get, like, their estate agents or something <laughs> like that. Um, you know. Um, I mean, going back uh, to your early days when you first started, yeah. uh, you know, as a, as a little young singer, you know, I mean, how did it all start for you, Lisa? Was it something you always wanted to do, as you know, when you was uh, a wee child? Well, when I when I was probably about four or five, and I'm um, just sitting in my bedroom and and started to sing, you know, and it just felt really, really lovely. Mm. It felt incredible. Um, I don't know. It ju it just it yeah. takes over you. But what I, I think I was really fortunate because I talked to a lot of people who who often say, "Oh, I never knew what I wanted to be. I never knew what I wanted to do." And um, and it is very fortunate when when from an early age you mm. can actually decide what you're going to do mm. and, can, pin and pinpoint it. You know? Can you can you believe what you've achieved as well over the years? You know, with you, do you look back and think? 
you know, I mean, I've got a sheet here, and I'm not going to read it all out because. You know, yeah, I, mean, I know it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I can't Can you believe it? You know, best British push. newcomer in 1990, best best British female in 91 and 92, best artist in 1990, and it just goes on and on. And I mean, congratulations. Thank you. And I mean, that's something you must have. <laughs> did you dream about that when you was first starting out? To no, well, I never, I never dreamed about. I never thought about stuff like that. Mm. You know, I. I, I all I wanted to do was like make me make the music and mm. sing and mm. stuff and write, and um, I think you know when you when you get to a certain like level, then you you do you you become famous and it's like oh my god I'm famous I didn't really <laughs> want to be famous but. That's where I it suppose leads. It, yeah. that's inevitable mm. if your music becomes really successful. So, mm. yeah. I suppose, I suppose and is it is it still great to sing the old songs? Do you still like when you do do a live? Yeah, you still love that. Of course it is. I mean, you know, we've been touring now for on this on this album, been touring for over two years now, which yeah. nobody really like sort of realizes. Mm. But um, yeah, because I wanted to start really sort of small and letting sweaty clothes and stuff <laughs> like that and then build up from yeah. there. But I, but I always think that I have a divided audience because there's a lot of my audience, it's a very 50-50, it's like, mm. but there's like a lot of clubbers and there's a lot of people who, you know, they're like married with two kids and they, and they go back and they're respectable people and mm. they like the music. So it's quite difficult to to judge gigs because there are a lot of like Larry people and there are a lot of people who don't <laughs> want to be Larry. They're not, they're not throwing <laughs> things at the stage, is that what you're saying? No, <laughs> not that well, bad. maybe the non-Larry people would just bring rotten mm. vegetables and say, well, just everybody sit down. <laughs> is there certain songs that you have to sing? Uh, oh, of course. Yeah. Like, there's like all around the world, obviously. Mm. Um, and we and we always try to mix it up a bit, but we try to do like fifty fifty. Yeah. Because I because I think, you know, if people know your music from way away, um, and they're not aware of what you're doing now, then you mm. you can't just play all your new stuff. It's no. like it's really really self indulgent. Yeah. Isn't it? And what does your hometown think of Lisa Stansfield when you go down the oh, shop? So they it's go. It's been really good, nice. Good on you, Lisa. <laughs> well, it's been really nice going back there and um, made a few new friends mm. and and got in touch with a lot of old friends mm. and and yeah, everyone's really really cool about mm. it and then, and it's like you know you go to the market and you do shopping and everyone's like, oh yeah yeah how you doing. You know, and you don't know him. Yeah, but, but they know you. Like, all yeah. All right, Lisa. Yeah, 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 you're doing all right. And it's it's lovely to be. Obviously, when you do your gigs, you know, what I mean, doing your small gigs as well. It's lovely yeah. to to see the audience. You know, I mean, knowing all the words, all the lyrics, and the yeah, songs. Yeah, it scares me sometimes because then sometimes know the words better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's my next question. Have you forgotten the lyric before then? Oh, every time. <laughs> How do you cover it up then? How do you get? You just, you just carry on. Know. Yeah. <laughs> the, the secrets are. I've let my all my secrets. Secrets out. I always get the secrets out of my artists and all that when I'm interviewing. But also, what's it been like a part of the massive soundtrack like the Bodyguard? You know, what I mean, such a big soundtrack. And you know, well, I mean, how did that come about for you, Lisa? To... That that was really strange actually because um, we were we were on Arista like BMG Arista and. Um, Whitney Houston had agreed to do this this um, film. They wanted to do a soundtrack. So we were really, really busy at the time. And um and it was funny because we would do, we would play in New York and our M D Dave and he was only like thirty five at the time, I think, thirty four. He had, had a massive heart attack. We were playing Radio City Music Hall, mm. and um, and we were all waiting to go to sound check. And we saw this guy being wheeled out on a, on a gurney oh by paramedics and everything. 
moonlight. Oh my God, the poor man. What? I wonder what's happened to him. And it was our MD. Moonlight, where's Dave? Mm. You know. Oh dear. Um, and so, Radio City was lovely to us, mm. and they gave us two days. To mm. like reset everything because we had to reprogram everything because Dave wasn't there, so we had to b b do mm. something for someone else on the crew. So it all worked out really, really well. Mm. Um, and then after the show, we were so knackered, we were really knackered. You know? <laughs> Because we, yeah, we'd had yeah. all this to deal with. Over. And obviously, you know. we're obviously upset about the heart attack as well, and it obviously. Was like just, yeah, well, exactly yeah. all that. We'd been to see Dave in hospital, and um, Clive Davis came back after the show into the dressing room. And he said, Oh, I've got um, this, Whitney's doing this um, movie called The Bodyguard. And we wondered whether you wanted to do a song for the soundtrack. And it's like, and it was like, he, he didn't really care about anything. And, and we got a little bit niggled. Yeah. And um, part of us, us was saying, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got a bleak machine. <laughs> and I'll tell you I'm so glad that we wrote that song. But obviously the, 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 the soundtrack is, is the biggest selling soundtrack ever. Lisa. Yeah, yeah. So obviously to be on that. Yeah, it was a bit like like sort of winning the lottery. Because mm. we went in the studio and literally within... We, we wrote the song within about 10 minutes. And then within the day it was just finished. Mm. It was done. And um, we just forgot about it. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, it's another track, another track in the can. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you worked in some great venues. I was mentioning. I mean, yeah. I, I noticed the Royal Albert Hall comes to mind. Yeah, and yeah. Ronnie Scotts. You know, I mean, is that important when you when you're touring round? Is that? Is that something you really look for, the venue, and obviously you feel comfortable in, in certain yeah, I venues? Yeah, like, I like playing unusual venues as well. You know, but people have. Like I, I've not got the imagination to scout around for venues and stuff mm. like that. Not got bloody time either. <laughs> um, but when someone comes up with a really, really special venue, mm. it's it's really sweet. Mm. Um, the Albert Hall is a bit of a weird one because it's it's such a it's built for an orchestra. Yeah. So they do have like baffles and stuff like that, mm. but sometimes the sound is really difficult to yeah. deal with because yeah. it's just rever reverberating mm. around. Mm. Um, yeah, but I, it's it's amazing to um, yeah. actually play. Yeah, that. pinch yourself. Yeah. And any, any sort of touring, obviously, you've been touring for obviously a couple of years now. So is it like a, a few months off then, or you've still got to keep going? Um. Well, I think I think. You know, me and Ian are going to go to LA and January we're going to start thinking a bit, seriously thinking about the, like the next album, mm. making a, a list of, of everything. Because we've got so much stuff that it's really difficult to sort through. Mm. So we're going to have to like sit and like listen yeah. to a lot of stuff. What sort of direction um, you feel you're going to go into or you've not even, obviously not even decided um, that yet? I think it's sort of similar, you know, yeah. like similar sort of things. Um, you know, there's going to be some quite sort of cinematic stuff mm. on there and, and, and quite a lot of groove stuff. Yeah. And there'll be I think there's going to be more groove stuff on, on the next album than yeah. there is on this album. And, and hopefully some background vocals with Gary Spence. Yeah. I've been trying. <laughs> You're very trying. <laughs> <laughs> Now, last time we spoke as well, we were talking about the Northern Soul film. Yeah, yeah. I know Elaine's a, a good friend of yours. Oh, I've just been she? talking to really? Elaine. I, that's why I was a bit late, because I was talking to her. Mm. And I said, oh, I've got to go, I've got to go. We had, a, we had a great time. She's a very nice lady. She's to, gorgeous. And we yeah. had a right old chat. And it was yeah. quite funny, because her phone was going flat at the time. Oh, <laughs> and she, she said, can I just put the phone down in between the record so she said they can <laughs> let it charge? <laughs> But, uh, you know, I mean, you had a great... I know you wasn't, uh, you know, I mean, didn't spend too much time on it, but it was a few days for you, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. You had a great time, and... Uh, oh, yeah, it was lovely, and, like, we, you know, Ricky Tomlinson was lovely, mm. and um, it's so funny, actually, because, you know, the, 
the, the guy that plays my son, yeah. Elliot, um, we were looking at each other's teeth because we were like both laughing. Yeah. And I, I went, oh my god, you've got exactly the same teeth as me. <laughs> and if you look at his teeth on the film, he's got exactly yeah. the same teeth as mm. I have. I weird. probably don't smile on that film though because I'm right miserable. Well, I didn't recognise you. No, I did recognise your beautiful face, but the way you was done up, you know, with all these curves. Oh, and all I that. know. No, no, I wasn't beautiful in that <laughs> film at all. <laughs> Every, every single interview that I had that showed a clip of that film mm. when it was coming out, I made sure that I was like dolled, like dolled up to the nines, mm. like um, makeup wise and stuff. Fun, fun to do though, Lisa. Fun to do. Oh, it was brilliant. Mm. It was absolutely brilliant. And, it, and, it, and it's lovely to work with Elaine as well because mm. she's so relaxed as a, as a director. Mm. She, she just knows. If, if someone knows what they're doing, Mm. Then it's it's a real um, joy mm. to do. Oh, but you but you love your acting as well. That's another side of Lisa Stansfield, yeah, isn't it? Your I acting do. is I that. Like it, yeah. There's a few. Look at my little list here. There's a few films uh, past the Northern <laughs> Soul. So is that something you just do side by side, or they just come along accidentally? Um, mostly they come along accidentally. Mm. Well, I think everything that I've done yeah. acting wise has been mm. accidental. Mm. Um, you don't go searching for a part then? And no, sort of because I, th I think it's... It, I don't know. I, ju I just... I think if you don't want to do something, like if it's a second string to your ball, mm. then maybe you shouldn't do it because mm. then it becomes a job and mm. not a joy. Yeah, yeah just a joy. Just I mean? enjoy doing it. Yeah, that's right. It's really good. So obviously got any films in the pipeline you can tell us about or...? No, no, nothing as such, no. no. Um, I've, I have started writing an autobiography mm. and I've realised that my life is completely... <laughs> <laughs> you, mean, you mean you've got a strange, strange life when you look back? That you're trying yeah, to say, and is it's it? only when you look back <laughs> on it that you think, oh my God. But then when you, when you speak to other people about their family life when they mm. were younger, and everyone's life is just as yeah. messed up as everyone else. So is it going to be warts and all this book, is it? Is it going to be...? Um, pretty much, yeah. yeah. Listen, I've been around for a long time, and I think I'm going to have to write two books. Really? <laughs> <laughs> they make it into a comedy series. Have you, have you sort of asked around for help, or has it just been totally your, your um, input? So far it's been mine. Yeah. And I've asked my sisters to like, sort of mm. make suggestions and stuff. Um, but no, it, it just, the more you think about stuff, the more comes out. Yeah. You know, one thing triggers another thing. So have we got a release date for that? Or? No, no, not as such, no. No. I mean, I've not even got a publisher on it yet or anything mm. like that, so I'm just doing... Do my own thing like I do. Yeah, because then you have to do book signing as well as signing for your CDs. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm used to that. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a big question. This is a real big question, this one. Standout moment in your career. Is there, is there something that, uh, um, that, that really, you know, you look back and you think, oh, I was so, so pleased. I, th I, I really think that the one thing where I realised that it that it was like oh my god this is like really really serious mm. um was when i did the freddie mercury tribute <laughs> and I, I sang with george michael yep. and um did the hoover and all that sort of thing <laughs> it was lovely though because in rehearsal because everyone was being really serious about freddie mercury dying and, and all this sort of thing and, and they'd asked me to do i want to break free mm. And I, I said to Roger Taylor, do you think that it would be really, really bad taste of me if I went on on stage with, like, a vacuum cleaner and, and curlers in it, hair <laughs> net? And he, and he just said, that is what Queen is all about, yeah. bad taste. Yeah. <laughs> he said, please, just get on with it. <laughs> I like it. I think I can remember that. I can remember that. Yeah. No, it was nice. It was yeah. good. 
Um, and obviously working with Barry White, you know, I mean that. Yeah. You were talking about George brilliant. Michael, but did you actually meet Barry, or was it? Yeah, yeah? I got I got to make friends with him and everything. Mm. Um, got to sing with him. That was a lovely track, wasn't it? That was a real, real nice track. Mm. Going back in the day. But did you spend a lot of time with Barry, or was it just a, 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 a passing? Just when we were around, you know, where the when our paths crossed, you mm. know, and um. That was it, but yeah, we met him quite a few times. Is there someone that so you, you'd like to work with in the future, perhaps on your next album? Is, it, is there mm, someone? Yeah, I mean, obviously, quite... apart from me. Yeah, but, well, you know, that's a given, yeah. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you're going to. I can see you're going to slap me in a minute, Lisa. Uh, no, no, I'll just kick you. Oh. Really? <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> now, is it? Is there? Um, is there an artist, a, a female artist, or a, a male artist that you, you, no. you know you'd like to work with? I mean, I think Emily Sander is mm. incredible. Um, I think John Newman is amazing. I'd love to do something with John Newman, mm. actually. Yeah. Um, no, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of British talent around now. Mm. You know, serious talent. Yeah. Rudimental, I love. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. Is that the sort of music you listen to when you when you can relax? Yeah, I do. I, I don't really listen to music very much because I do write a lot and it, and it does influence me. Mm. So when I'm not writing, I listen mm. a lot. Mm. Um, I love Alicia Keys as well. I mm. think she's incredible. I get, you know, I get up because um, if Ian's upstairs, mm. he likes to watch his, like, politics stuff like that on TV and if I'm working I have to get ready I'll go downstairs and I'll put my makeup on downstairs and I'll put Alicia Keys on and just scream my head Is it loud? Do you put it on loud? Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure I annoy, annoy all the neighbours but it's good test music yeah, It is, it's very good I can... You should enjoy it Yeah, why not enjoy it yeah, well, Like why a not? car No, no <laughs> Did your husband say, come and turn it down, please? I'm trying to watch the TV. No, I'm sure he wants to, but he doesn't. And you, obviously you work well. We spoke about him earlier. You work well in the studio because obviously you've been yeah, together a long yeah. time. So obviously, who's the boss? Are you, is it a 50-50 team that you have? It is really. We've just got used to being together. I mm. mean, God, it's 26 years, you mm. know. So. Does it feel like that, 26 years? It, it, it doesn't really. No, it really no. doesn't. Um, and we are we still... I'm going to be all like nice, nice, you know, but <laughs> we are really still very loved. I can see that sparkle. You've yeah. still got that. So me and my wife <laughs> yeah, have that sparkle. We've really done 33 nice. years, Lisa. We're still yeah. spoon in the bed. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see people's imagination running wild as you said that, Lisa. <laughs> and now uh, you made a great remake of "You Know How to Love Me." Oh my God! Yeah, that's you know what I mean, a long time that, ago. That, that was that was a you know I mean to take on a track like that. How did that track come about? Then was that just a? I think that was another snow boy. Really? Mm. Yeah, I think that was a snow boy. And you know, I mean, was you was you worried about taking the track like that on? You know, I mean, the big track like that because that's a, a big anthem. Do you, you worry about things like that? Well, uh, you know, at the time I didn't know that it was such a massive anthem, mm. so it probably was better that I didn't because I just went in with confidence and I just sang it. Yeah, yeah. But if I'd have known what gravitas it actually had, mm. I probably would have, would have completely missed it. <laughs> I was going to say something else messed it up. Yes, I know. <laughs> I, know. I, I, I know next time we have an interview, I need a bleak machine. Yeah, yeah you just do. Just occasionally, not a lot, just occasionally. Just to make it more real. Of course, of course. <laughs> Uh, obviously, we, we spoke about Christmas earlier. Yeah. Uh, what's your future plans? Obviously, you're still promoting the album. You st are you still travelling around at the moment? Um, no, we've got. I think tomorrow is like the last day before Christmas that mm. I work, and so I, then I can go to LA. Mm. I can do Christmas shopping oh. and see all the like my nieces and. Mm. and um, before Christmas and see the family and then You've go got the decorations up with your person that loves your, your, your real tree and yeah well that... we're good we're, we're trying to organize to have a tree before we get to LA mm. So. Mm. fantastic well Lisa it's been it's been oh, a pleasure it's always you. always lovely and it's it's really nice that 
uh, you've taken the time out today to, to speak to me, Thanks and it's a real much. pleasure. And uh, can I wish you a Merry Christmas? That's not too yeah, early now, really, you is it? A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Yes, and don't forget my number if you need me for backing vocals. I will, you know I will, I've got it. You kicked me again there, Lisa. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much. All right.